Welcome. I'm Susie Hudson, Executive Director at White Bear Center for the Arts. We're honored to present Into Nature, our first international online plein air exhibition featuring the work of artists from around the world. This special show has been made possible by funds from White Bear Center for the Arts Legacy Endowment Fund. So thank you to all who have made this possible. We find ourselves today, unfortunately, still in the midst of a devastating global pandemic. Never has art been so essential in connecting us to each other and expressing our human experience. Never has nature felt so necessary to finding hope, inspiration, and a sense of solace. As in nature, we're reassured that all seasons eventually change. In providing into nature at this time, it is our hope that you will find both the comfort of nature and a reverberating connection to our shared need for beauty and art and its ability to help communicate what is often inexpressible. May these images transport you out of isolation and into our big, beautiful, precious world. May they blow winds through your rooms and spill sunshine across your floors. And may they wash your soul with the spaciousness and fleeting essence captured so beautifully in plein air. I hope you will feel the strength and reverence for life captured in these works of art and offered to you as a gift by these artists. Enjoy, be well, and hang in there. everybody. This is WBCA's first international online plein air show. All the work was done between March and June 30th, 2020. We did open this up to in-studio painting too. So it was supposed to originate from an idea outside and then it could be brought inside again. Since the show was totally online, we were able to open it up to the whole world and we had 134 artists enter artwork from eight different countries. There were entries from across the United States, from the east to the west coast, in Canada, as well as Europe, Russia, South Africa, and Singapore. 95 pieces were selected from the 255 submitted. And I just want to add that some of the artwork is for sale, but we're asking people to go directly on the website to the artist contact information or contact WBCA um, for the artist info. I would like to thank all of our sponsors, Emergency Contractor Services Incorporated, Riel Precision Manufacturing, Schweder's Building Supply, Schweder's Pottery, and our gold sponsors, William and Berenshire, New Studio Architecture, Mueller Memorial, The Pillars of White Bear Lake, and Steve Gorenson Video. And, of course, we'd like to thank the state of Minnesota, this activity is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a Minnesota State Arts Board Operating Support Grant, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. But most of all, I'd like to thank the staff and the members of WBCA who, who support us through this, uh, this time and um, our donors. Without them, we wouldn't even exist. So thank you very much. Okay, down to the awards. We have a first place, second place, third place, honorable mention, best watercolor, best pastel, best acrylic oil, and we have judges choice. Our judges today are Frank Zeller and Dan Weimer. If you'd like to say a few words about yourself, Dan, then we can get into your pick for this show. All right, thank you very much for the opportunity to judge this. It was uh... It was really challenging. Um, I am, I come from the commercial um, world. I was a graphic designer and then I was an illustrator. 
and I have been a working fine artist for probably the last 25 years. And I'm also an instructor. And so I have been in plein air competitions and I've judged competitions. So I know how, how difficult both sides can be. And I just, I'm amazed at uh, how diverse the paintings were and how the body of work was so strong. It made our jobs really, really challenging to narrow it down. This is Marsh Gold by Greg Lecker. Yeah, I, we, we got a, a kind of almost an extra pick, one that we wanted to really pull out and, and let everybody uh, take notice of. And this was mine. This was a, a beautiful piece that kind of stuck with me. I, I, like, uh, I like Greg's painting uh, here. I, I like how you enter in from the bottom and your eye comes up along the marsh marigolds and comes up around the top and it comes back in. I like the uh, kind of the pathway for the eye. Um, I always like um, paintings that show water with no sky and, and essentially you're looking into a mirror and imagining what, what's above you out of the picture plane. Um, I, I, love, I love the kind of the impressionistic little facets of color. Um, it's not ultra realistic. It's, it's very um, expressive and impressionistic. I like how the, how the blues and the greens in the foreground are, are in the deep shadow and you come out and the blues and the greens get a little lighter, especially the blue in the water gets a little lighter up at the top. And also it was a, a square format, which, which appeals to me. I think it's harder to, to design within a square than it is a, a classic traditional rectangle. But all in all, I just, I thought the work was fresh. I loved the brushwork. I thought it was just a great piece. Thank you. And now we'll have Frank Zeller's choice. I can't say enough about Frank. He's, he's just been a big part of the Arts Center as an instructor um, with our, uh, our watercolor program in the schools. And he's just been a great influence in the state of Minnesota with North Star Watercolor Society and everything he's done for the Arts Center for WBCA. Would you like to say a few words about yourself? Yes, I sure would. I have a, I have a background coming from the education point of view. I'm an art teacher in the, uh, in the district for uh, 32 years. And then I developed the elementary art program, which the Center for the Arts took over after they cut our program. And then I've been retired for over 22 years. And in the process of that, I've been teaching adults in watercolor uh, painting. So that's basically my, uh, my background. Now, as far as the uh, choice that I have made, I want to talk about the, uh, the uh, judge's statement that I would have. Uh, first of all, I look at composition. I also look at shape and value, and the color is third in, in my look. You have to have the artist's presence in each painting. And that's really what I looked at. I also want to take out the bias out of, uh, of, of, of me. You know, we all paint a certain way and that's our bias. But when you judge a show of this magnitude, you've got to have more than one criteria. And so I had three of them. One was formalism, but taking that type of, that type of structure and, and expression is, is having a different criteria to evaluate it. Then imitationalism, this is realism. You analyze it, if, if it's towards the, the imitationalism, the, the perfect picture, then you use that criteria. Is the perspective right? Are the subjects uh, that are painted are accurate? And all of that type of stuff. Then the third is emotionalism. And that kind of lets it be believe that we have to interject our feelings in each painting. So evaluating over 200 paintings is a unique styles of painting is a humble experience and being an active painter, knowing how much work each piece represents, I, I take my hat off to all of you. Now we're looking at this watercolor that I have selected as my choice. Now I know we had a lot of good watercolors in the show, but none of them reached the fact of interpretation, of feeling. This watercolor was controlled by the water. 
and the color that this artist put it in. But the artist maintained that control by adding to it as the painting developed. So it wasn't like looking out at a landscape and saying, oh, I got to put that tree in it. No, no, here, I got to put a dark mark here because it's got a balance with this. And then given the center of interest where the sun is, right down in the right portion of this painting made, made it uh, unique to me. Well, thank, thank you. you. I just want to say congratulations. Uh, that was Sunset by Ann E. Seisel. Next, we have Best Watercolor. Dan, would you like to say something about this choice? Yeah, to me, this is just um, the purity of this piece, the purity of the wash and the purity of the marks on this watercolor are exceptional. I think this is almost like the traditional British style. I think watercolor, the watercolor media, it, it's unlike other medias. It shows if you're, um, you're muddling with it. It shows if you're not confident. Um, this was such a confidently painted piece. It was just distilled down to just the information you need. And in watercolor, if you can make a, an expressive, accurate mark the first time, uh, it shows. And this is just masterful, in my opinion. I, I just think that it's not overworked. It's just stated. Um, I think the, the three S's of plein air are, are see it, simplify it, and state it. And this is just a wonderful, wonderful watercolor. I'd have to agree with Dan and his remarks. The thing that I like about this watercolor is the atmosphere that is created. You can yeah. almost uh, sense it, you can feel it as you said, and you can smell it. Uh, it's uh, just a beautiful piece of work. And also, I always like to look at a painting and its composition and how it has been designed. And I think that's superb. It, it is, and, and I'll echo your, the atmosphere is wonderful, yes. Yeah. Congratulations to Andy Evenson for the watering hole. Now we have Best Pastel. We looked at it, there were uh, quite a few good pastels. The first thing I liked about it was the overlapping shapes and it really creates a sense of depth. And to me, I, I come in the bottom of this painting and it's almost like I hopscotch on those lights back into the scene. I, I just, I think that the, the marks are, are wonderful. There's some wonderful contrast of pure linear marks in the foreground versus just um, shapes that are, um, edges are, are softened. So I think there's a real nice contrast between using the lines of pastels versus the shapes in this painting. To me, I really, I really enjoyed the composition. If I may add to uh, Dan's remark, which I agree totally with, I look at the composition as how the paper had been divided and you can see one third and then to two thirds. I think that's it's just an excellent uh, a combination of, of space and also how your eye is led in with the patches of water up to a blue receding color with a touch of yellow on top so it relates to everything else. So it's a, it's a fine piece of work. Well, congratulations to Karen St. Clair for late afternoon at Wild Horse Creek. Now for the best uh, oil, acrylic. Uh, again, I have to go with the, uh, with the composition, the way it is divided. It's almost divided equally, diagonally, across it. But what remains, remains is that we link that to the trees coming down to the lower uh, left and then into the, the blue-gray uh, atmospheric quality of the work. Our focal point, if you have to have, to have a handle to get into it, is the uh, vertical tree right there, boy, that just sings. And then you move through the painting, down the road, all the way into the atmospheric uh, town of, uh, I think it's Red Wing, but it's, it's just gorgeous. Yeah, and I, I like the variety of greens. A lot of times when you paint in the summer, I don't think artists vary their greens enough. And this is just uh, so wonderful. And, and I really like the, um, the atmospheric perspective. It really, you get a sense of distance when you lose that warmth in the background and you lose your value contrast. Your eye really goes back there and it really seems like you're going into deep space. There's a lot of things I like about it. And just the subtlety of 
tarmac, putting warmth up in the sky. I like the different color on the left side of the sky versus the right side of the sky. It's very subtle, but the sky harmonizes with the foreground really, really nicely also. Well, congratulations to Bob Upton for Red Wing Overlook. Now, honorable mention. I think it's just, just amazing when, when you, watercolor is a hard media to control and when you let it get out of control intentionally, it's, it's very exciting. Um, the lost edges and found edges on this um, are, are tremendous and just from pure design, I love this. I almost see this, this reddish brown shape crashing into this bluish green shape. I'm always excited when, when people leave a lot of areas where there's resting points. And I think it makes the, um, it makes the detailed areas look even more exciting. But this was just such, to me, this was such a wonderful piece and it was such a gutsy watercolor um, that, that I just was drawn to it. I look at this, if, if I go ahead and <clears throat> take my mind, vision, and just reduce everything down to simple shapes. You can see the big green shape, which is a kind of like a square basically. And then you've got a rectangle, which is the red shape, which is the door. And then, then you have this smaller shape that complements that. And so to me, this is such an abstraction of composition that, and then also the, like Dan says, the water quality of it and the lost and found edges uh, uh, just sings a uh, uh, well done painting. Yeah, very, very nice. Congratulations to Nina Tan, Green Walls, Red Door. Third place, if Frank, you'd like to start talking about this? Yeah, uh, this is a large painting, by the way. But if you look at the composition of this, uh, it, is, it is just absolutely fantastic. The negative space, that it, it goes diagonal from corner to corner, but it does it in such a creative way, it breaks it up on the way, our journey through the painting, that, uh, and it's also invitationalism. It's, it's this real, this realism. But you know, you gotta to go ahead and say, okay, what criteria would I use to judge something like that? Well, the petals of the flowers are well done with the shadows. And also the, the touch of red, right, right where they, they have it, uh, really sings to me. So this is a perfect painting. You mentioned uh, the design. I think it is realism, but when you blow realism up this much, you yeah. really create strong abstract design. And, and I like the, the complementary colors. Essentially it's red and green and, and the tints from that and black. And, and when you get into those shadow shapes and you de uh, it's really mysterious when you dive down and get into the depths of those shadow shapes. I, I just think from a, from a design standpoint, this is very striking and it would be wonderful to see it large and in person. One of the rules that I've heard from another artist is that a painting should stand on its own 50 feet away. This one definitely does. Well, congratulations to Mandy Trimble Leonard, looking deeper. Now for second place, do you want to start, Frank, or should I? Yeah, yeah, I do. Go ahead, <laughs> yeah. Know. You know, those criteria that I, formalism, invitational, and emotionalism, well, number one, it is emotionalism. It is also formalism, uh, mainly because of the way that it's organized in the concept. It's a square. It's got a, uh, a rectangle that is not the, the same on each side, but it's, it's wider. The left is a little bit wider than the, uh, the uh, vertical on the right. And then you've got this other shape of yellow. And then whatever that's happening in there is catches one's eye. I, wow, this is just a superb abstraction. Yeah, I, I think um, we were both just really drawn to this piece. I just think, um, Less is more, and indication is just tantalizing. I, I think yeah. the shapes are beautiful, and yeah. it, it makes you want to know what's in that thing. I think the title, Curiosity, is, is, is very uh, apropos. And I, I really love the, um, the shadow shape of the woman on the wall on the right is wonderful, and how it links down into her shoe and connects that shape. But 
it's just it's such a wonderful a wonderful piece and it's just a wonderfully designed square piece well congratulations to dk palachek for just curious study nine and now for our first place best mm. show this artist is so outstanding. Um, I hope that you click on our link later and look at all, all of the pieces that um, we have on the website. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. This, this artist um, submitted three pieces and all three pieces could have been award winners, but his body of work was, was fabulous and we were drawn to this piece. I just think it's it's so beautiful. You you have to um, appreciate the temperature changes throughout this piece. How the little bit of warmth in the waves, surrounded by the cool ocean, and and the rocks that are warm on the left, and they transition into cool on the right. And what I really love is the shadow shapes. You lose detail when shadows connect to shadows. That's where you lose the detail. And there's so little detail on this piece, but it says so much. Um, and, and atmosphere, Frank used the word atmosphere earlier. This piece has so much atmosphere. Right? It's just, it's magnificent. I have to agree on everything. I look at it and think of uh, emotional, emotionalism uh, because he's trying to uh, uh, capture an essence, a feeling of, of light coming through fog. It, that's my estimation away hitting across the rocks just so skillfully and then right down at the lower right you can still see it hitting there and the simplicity of of that's why i say less is more on this particular thing because can you imagine looking at this and seeing all the crevices in those rocks you could paint uh, you could be, be, be painting out there today on that same painting uh, how the artist eliminated all that and went for the juggler of, of atmosphere. Very good. Yeah, and, and just real quickly, just look at the color of the sky on the upper left and then the upper right. Yeah, right. And, and as you come across that horizon line, it completely disappears. That lost line where the yeah, sky does. becomes the water, I think, is, is wonderful. But yeah. this is such a, such a striking piece. Yeah, well, congratulations to Mark Anderson for House of Refuge. And I know this was really... Uh, a, a challenging show to judge because of the work was so outstanding. So I, I really hope that um, everybody can go to the website and see all the wonderful work that was submitted. Um, and just think of sometimes when you see a sky, it may be from South Africa instead of Minnesota. So um, mm -hmm. really enjoyable to, to go through all the paintings. They're wonderful. And thanks for our judges for putting up with the challenges of um, long distance judging. And um, I appreciate it, uh, your knowledge and you know, your depth of thought for each piece that we looked at. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for being a part of your art center. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. It was, it was fun and challenging. Every artist has got a different um, sensibility yeah. and, a, and a different bunch of criteria, but I thought this was a fun process of uh, trying to kind of hammer out something that we could get, get together with. So I, I enjoyed it. It was, you know, challenging. I like things that you don't, and you like things that I don't. Yeah. But I thought we came together, and I thought the whole thing worked out pretty well. It was thoroughly enjoyable, and thanks again, Danielle, for uh, including me. Thank you. Yes, and I have to say that too. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Danelle. Well, thank you.